Blessings on 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 more blessings to you. Thank you so much. It's Tuesday night. It's Bible study night uh, at Network of Believers. Well, I'm the proud, Lady T and I are the proud founders and pastors of Network of Believers. We are always excited about what God is doing, what he's saying. Uh, we serve an incredible God. Uh, there's none like him. He's all powerful, all knowing. Uh, always ready, always ready to to jump into action when it comes to his children, and you are one of them. So we are excited tonight about the word that is going to add pieces to your puzzle. I'm here to announce to you, and some of you already know, that you are entering into what is called incredible life. You are entering into incredible life. You need to declare that at your house. You need to say it every you need to let everything know that you know the word of the lord concerning you and life for you today is going to be better than it's ever been because you're walking in true purpose i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited i want you guys to begin to share begin to share begin to share the word of the lord with your family with your friends with everybody you are connected to there is a word from the lord on tonight and i'm very excited about it let's pray we're going to jump straight into it father thank you so much again for this opportunity to speak your word, God. You are so good. You are so good. You are so good. And your mercies and your grace endured forever. God, we are so grateful to you. We are so grateful to you that you always extend grace, always ready to bring us into this wealthy place that you promised us. And tonight, God, we come into agreement with your word. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. We are here to obey what you say like never before. I thank you so much for speaking and using me, Lord, for this word on tonight. It's not about me. It's only about you. So speak and allow me to only say what you desire to be heard. I thank you for it. Thank you for every listener on tonight. Thank you for every one heart that is open to hear your word. God bless them beyond their wildest dream. Give them, God, what they are being promised, especially the things that have aligned with purpose in you. God, give them the courage and the faith to believe you through all of the things that they are being encountered uh, by. And I thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank God for my brother, Apostle Kevin Davidson. Love you, man. Felicia Rogers, bless you. Apostle Kent Deloney, blessings to you. Andre Moultrie, minister, blessings to you. It's, it's, it's Shane, blessings to you. Thank all you guys. Thank you all. Your London uh, uh, Dawson, blessings. Of course, my wife, Lady T, I love her. Blessings. Barbara Gaither, blessings to each of you. Mama Lois, blessings to you. Blessings, blessings. I just wanted to acknowledge you as I jump into this word. I am ready to speak the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sylvia, for being in the house. Now, last night we talked about the awakening of the prophets or the prophet awakening i'm excited and there's a reason why god is pushing this now it's because we're in a, a in a major shift we're in a major shift right now and in this shifting moment that you are in your your spirit is being disrupted and it's, it's in a good way it's in a good way it don't feel like it you just got to get familiar with where you are in the spirit realm you got to get familiar with there are so many disruptions that are happening they are not bad disruptions even though you're not interpreted yet as a move from God you will you will understand why God is doing what he's doing with you so this is the time that the, there is an awakening of your prophetic. Uh, God is going to use you. you. For those of you especially that thought you were uh, 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 nothing and who am I, that's the very thing that is locking God into you. Your humbleness is what is causing God to lock into you. That's a spiritual law that if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. The more you push yourself down, the more God pushes you up. And so many of you are on uh, God's radar right now just because of your humble spirit. Thank you so much, uh, 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 my family. The Suggs are in the house. Thank you so much, Katrina Robinson. Now, let's jump into tonight's teaching. I want to give you something that is just a gift. I want to start off by giving you a gift because in all that getting, the Bible suggests that we get an understanding. And sometimes we, we miss everything because we just don't understand. Listen to me. Listen to me. We talk about the word kingdom so much and we hear it. Kingdom life, kingdom this, kingdom that. 
Well, here's what you got to understand. Just in case you don't know it, I want to emphasize this. Blessings to you, Mom. Blessings to you. I want to emphasize this to you. When there is no king, there is no kingdom. If you are not interested in Jesus, you are not living in kingdom because he is the king of kings. If you're not interested in what he's doing, you are not living in the kingdom. And the reason why I wanted to make this clear, because there are some strange doctrines out there right now that is absolutely, positively uh, just trying to go around this. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters, we're not advancing past Jesus. We didn't replace him. We talk about doing greater works. I got to get this out and then I'm getting into the prophetic, the prophetic intercessor. We're talking about doing greater works and we are talking about how great the work that we are going to work in our lives. Well, Jesus made something very clear and it's very interesting to me. He says, first, if you believe in me and the works that I do, these and greater works shall ye do. The prerequisite to great works is to believe in the works that he does. We have been taught that we can go around him and get to the universe or whatever this stuff is, and then we're going to do incredible things. No, if we believe in him, there is no kingdom without the king. You might be in something, but you're not in the kingdom. Perhaps that's why things keep crashing down, because we have heard things that cause us to believe in ourselves more than we believe in the one that create life. I wanted to give that as a sidebar so that when we go into our teaching tonight, you'll know, without the king, there is no kingdom. So you're not living in kingdom if you're not interested in the king of the kingdom. He is the king of kings. So if you're not interested in that, you're not in kingdom. I want to give that tip, tip but again. Now, Tonight, we're talking about prophetic intercessors, prophetic intercessors, prophetic intercessors. Last night, again, we talked about the awakening of the prophets. And many of you are getting the, the clarion call, the awakening of your spirit to what God had created you to do for such a time as this. You are not out of time. You, many of you are what is called late bloomers. You blooming late. God needed you for this time. I know you wanted to do, you seen other people seem, seem as if they were moving into their calling. They were doing great things. And you thought that it was your time. Well, no, God said he saved you for such a, he needed you now. And so now you're going to see the hand of God on your life, pushing you in what is called acceleration to the ministry that he ordained, the specifics of what he ordained you for. You are a prophetic intercessor. Now this word prophetic, we already know what prophetic is. It's us getting insight of the future, especially as it concerns God's heart and what God is desiring to do. What God, that's what the prophetic is. He give you insight on, uh, on a coming of something that is about to come. That's what prophetic is. Now, this word intercessor, it's someone that stands in the gap. It's someone that petition for, you know, you go to the grocery store, you got people outside signing the petition in hopes that it will push. If you get enough names on the, the, the petition, you can get uh, 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 your agenda pushed through. Now, this is what the, uh, the intercessor is. It's one that petitions or stands in the gap with the intent of getting something pushed through or getting something done. So when we are prophetic intercessors, it means that we are the people that know the heart of God. And now we are praying diligently because there are things that need to be done. And God is planting us in our many different areas. Wherever you are, God has planted you there to be a prophetic intercessor. We need prophetic intercessors. We need people that know the heart of God that know what God wants and begin to pray. Now, praying is significant. Praying is significant. Praying is significant. But I want you to understand that praying under the direction of God is more significant. It's more significant because we have prayed so many prayers that was not in alignment with God. We, we didn't pray the will of God. We prayed the will that we thought that we can. Now, listen to me. We have these things called bombarding heaven, bombarding heaven. Now, listen to me. If it's not the will of God, you can get as many people as you desire to pray and bombard heart, uh, heaven and think that you're going to twist God's arm behind his back to make your agenda come to pass. That's not so. That's not so. But when God says he wanted, he desires prophetic intercessors. See, the, the, the Lord says he's given the earth to man. 
to govern the earth. This is why Jesus, when he actually said that the harvest is truly plenteous, but the labors are few. I need your help, disciples. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he will send therefore labors. In other words, there need to be people that even when the agenda in the heart of God is made known, they need to pray. And you are one of them. And God has given you insight of things that are not even appeared yet. He's going to give you insight of what to pray for before they even happen. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be the one that God is depending on when you see it. He's going to give you insight of the intent of the enemy. And he's going to let your spirit see it. And you're going to begin to pray. You're going to begin to, to, to speak to heaven concerning what you see in your spirit. Now listen to me. All of us qualify to be intercessor. I don't care if some of you have had injuries, an accident, you are qualified to be an intercessor, an intercessor. And so you are about to petition God because God is dropping something in your spirit that he desires us to begin to pray for. Prophetic intercessors, now listen to me very carefully because this is important. Prophetic intercessors is not only, or prophetic, when we say prophetic intercession, is not only equipping us with insight. This is not just us being equipped with insight from the spirit, but listen to the detail of what God is saying. The prophetic intercessor becomes the vessel. You will become the vessel through whom God or the spirit himself prays. I'm going to say it again. It's not just you getting insight, but it's actually you becoming the vessel by which the spirit used to utter out what heaven wants to be heard, what heaven wants to desires to be declared. That's what he's saying. So now you need to prep yourself because not only will you be a willing vessel to pray, but you'll be the vessel that God says I can use to say what I want to say. Now, how do you how do you prove this? This is what Romans 8:26 is talking about. It says, "For we know not what to pray, but the spirit itself will make the intercessor." That's why he says I need prophetic. I need prophetic intercessor. I want to give insight. I want to give insight to people. I want to give insight. You are qualified. That's why you're here tonight hearing is because God is going to use you as a prophetic intercessor. Now, when you jump into this ministry and you say, yes, Lord, there are some vices that the enemy has 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 seemingly had his uh, a hand around your neck and you couldn't get out of it. But now that you say yes to the, the ministry of prayer, God says he's going to cut all ties to all of the bondages that held you in a place. This is working for your favor. This is working for your good. Just because you say yes to this, God says some things are going to break off. There are some things that are about to be broken off of you. There are some things that are about to be broken off of you. There are some things that are about to be broken off of you. There are some chains that are being released because you're saying yes to the ministry of God. There are those of you that are under the sound of my voice tonight that God is making a prophetic intercessor. God says he's making a prophetic intercessor out of you. You under the sound of my voice. Your spirit it's on alert. It seems like your, your spirit is heightened right now. You don't even understand what this is. This is different. My spirit is on alert. My, my sleep has been disrupted. This, things are, are not like that. They're unusual. This is because God has called you to be an intercessor. And he's going to give you insight. He's disrupting things. You, you perhaps think that something is wrong with you. What is wrong? Why, why is this happening to me? It's because God has chosen you something to do something incredible. Now, God will always find you in the middle of your worst dilemma and give you what he desires. And you have to understand that your obedience is the very thing that pulls you out of the thing that had you wrapped up, tied up and tangled up. He always comes to us in the middle of our mess. You know that every time you're praying to God, for, for deliverance from something. You notice how he always gives you an assignment? He says, now go pray for them. Every time you ask for deliverance in your life, God says, now, I'm going to give you deliverance, but it's going to come through you delivering somebody else. <laughs> this is what God is doing. This is why your spirit is on alert. This is alert. This is why you're feeling so disrupted right now. What is going on with you? You have been chosen to be a prophetic intercessor. Now listen to me. Don't get caught up into all of these arguments, these rank arguments. Who's the greatest this? We have so many arguments now in the body of Christ. Who's what? Who ain't there? And you can't go. I didn't declare this and all that. 
Don't get caught up into all of that. That doesn't matter to God. You know what he desires? Is a willing vessel. Is a willing vessel. Don't get caught up into the fight. Don't get caught up into who is telling you you were qualified or you did qualify. A lot of times when God gives you a ministry, he's not telling you to tell everybody because he knows that you're going to be talked out of it because you don't fit into their system. You don't fit into what they see as, as, as a problem. That don't matter. If God has told you, a lot of times an intercessor is people that we don't even know, but we're giving an incredible, an incredible responsibility. People don't know many times that you as an intercessor are holding things together. They don't know why it happened, but you held things together because the Lord is using you as an intercessor. Listen, don't get into the rat race, the game. Don't get caught up into all of that. Just be available for God to use you as a prophetic intercessor because people don't understand. They don't get it. It's you. Can't nobody determine how much information God desires to give you. Can't nobody put a governor on it. That's between you and God. So, so stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. This is why your sleep is disrupted. This is why things have shifted in your life so drastically. It's because God is calling you for such a time as this. You are a prophetic intercessor. The Spirit of God will lead you uh, into things that He desires you to pray for. He will He will cause you to see things that you He He desires you to pray. He didn't say have a conversation about. He says pray this, pray this, pray this, pray, and you will begin to pray. You'll begin to pray. You'll begin to pray. You'll begin to pray, and you'll begin to see things manifest just because you obey God. You'll be led by the Spirit of God. He'll tell you what to pray for. Now, this is a difference. Now, what I'm talking about is a total difference than just having a prayer meeting. I'm not just talking about having a prayer meeting. on I'm talking about prophetic intercessors. You are set in place. Your job is to make sure that when God sends the alert about something to happen, you begin to speak in the spirit. The Spirit will give you the utterance on what to say, when to say, how to say. Again, a prophetic intercessor is not just equipped with insight, but you will become the vessel by which God will pray through. You become the vessel through whom the Spirit itself will begin to utter things. This is why my spirit has got to be yielded. This is why I can't get caught up into system. I can't get caught up into the, the ranking thing, who rank higher. God just needs a humble person that will yield their body and be ready to pray. This Again, this is different than just have a prayer meeting. This would be an assignment of prayer. It's different. An assignment of prayer. You will labor in prayer over the assignment. God will give you a burden. If you read in the scripture, you understand how the prophet said the burden of the Lord concerning a certain thing. This is what you're going to develop is a burden for something. And God is going to give you the spirit, the insight. He's going to say, pray for this. Pray for this. Again, why is God telling me to pray if he's God? The same reason why Jesus said the harvest is truly plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he will send there for labor. In other words, pray to the Lord that he will be gracious enough to equip the people to get the harvest that is plenteous. This is what we need now more than anything. Pray to the Lord. He needs people that are focused in prayer. Not just having a prayer meeting. Not just, this is an assignment, a specific assignment that God will drop in your spirit and he'll say, now intercede over this. We have made rituals out of everything. This is why the Lord is so specific, because we've had prayer meetings and they just become rituals. We make rituals out of almost everything that we do, even prayer. This is why Jesus says, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 5, he says, hypocrites love to pray. They love to stand up. They love to stand up. They, they love to present themselves deep over their prayers, but the, the prayers are not effective. The prayers is not effective. And so God is saying to you, he says, now I am, I am presenting an opportunity to be an intercessor. This would be one of the greatest ministries of this time, especially as we enter into what we are entering into. He wants people that he can drop and say, pray for this now. There's no evidence. There are people that are moving as if it's not upon us. They won't see. But you're going to have to pray. I need people that are standing in the gap. I need people that are praying. 
I need people that are, know how to pray. I need people that are, are persistent in prayer. I need people that are willing to pray. That's what God said. He says, I need people. But you got to know what to pray. You got to, this is not, again, a ritualistic that we just come together and just throw things out into the atmosphere. God says, I won't say it what I won't say it. And if you will yield yourself, I'll give you exactly what to say. I'll pray through you. I'll pray through you. I'll pray through you. I'll pray through you. The Lord, the Lord says he'll pray through you if you allow him. Now, I need to emphasize something that I just said. There's a qualification for this. The Lord is, is asking for volunteers. He says, I need people that will volunteer. And when they volunteer, I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them what to pray for. I'm getting, now, now in, in the book of Daniel chapter 10, I'm, I'm using the book of Daniel because Daniel is a great example of a prophetic intercessor. He's a great example of prophetic insight. In, in the book of Daniel chapter 10, we've heard the story over and over again, but I want to get the specifics for this particular teaching as it relates to prophetic intercessor. I want to show you something there. We know that Daniel is an example. Daniel is laboring in prayer because he sees something. He gets insight into something. Now, here's the qualifications, and I need you, I need you to know that this is why it is so important that we as intercessors understand that our lifestyle is very important. We, we as believers must understand that there is criteria in God. There is, there is a standard, if you will, in God that he desires. There is a standard in God that he desires. Now, I know, I know the doctrines have shifted a little bit, and we've taught a, 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 a form of grace that does not align up with Scripture. But there are qualifications. God is asking you that you would come before him and ask him what is desire and present to him a lifestyle worthy of an intercessor. Worthy of an intercessor, a, a worthy of a prophetic intercessor. He said, I need people that can labor, but I need their hands to be clean. Oh, that disqualified me. The Lord says, if you would say yes, he's able to clean. Listen to me very carefully. Daniel is praying. And, 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 and oftentimes we took the story and we've heard the story taught about he was on a fast 21 days and then he gets an answer from the Lord. Please hear this. If you read that chapter 10 of Daniel, Daniel is not on a fast. I, I, and the reason why I'm bringing this out, because I want to show you detail. Because the Lord will give you things to pray for, and man, they'll be so heavy that you'll lose your appetite. And you, you have to be very intentional, because sometimes you'll lose your appetite, and because people have called that fasting, it's not really fasting. It's just that the thing that you saw disrupted you, and you lost your appetite. You had no joy. He ate, he ate no pleasant bread. That was not fasting. It's because of what he saw, it disrupted his spirit. It's, it's like, oh, I don't like this, so I'm not eating. It was not a fast. Now, please hear what I'm about to say. Because as he goes through, he, he, he's laboring in his emotions. He can't eat, but he is a prophetic intercessor. He finally gets an answer from the Lord. Now, I want to read this 10th chapter of Daniel, verse number 12, because I need you to see this, because there are things that qualify us in this time of intercession. And I need you to see, I want to be very specific because the Lord said, be very specific. This is not a ritual. This is not just blurting out prayers. This is the utterance from a pure heart. And some of you are going to make the sacrifice because you're going to understand the necessity. This will be the very thing that breaks all of the vices that you have. The enemy attacking, the enemy attacking, your peace is not there because the enemy is attacking. Your family, there's so many things that you are being attacked by and you won't get relief until you say yes to the will of the Lord. He's made you an intercessor, a prophetic intercessor. You have to understand this. There are things that disrupt your spirit. People say, you're on a fast because you didn't eat. No, you're not on a fast. You've got to understand this because you've got to make everything count. And it doesn't count until you get understanding of where you are. So Daniel says this. And when, when, when the angel shows up to Daniel, here's what he says to Daniel. Here's what he says to Daniel. Let's go there. This is Daniel chapter 10, verse number 12. Look at what he says. Then said he unto me, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the Lord, thy, word was, you know, thy words were heard, and I am come for 
thou word. Now, do you see this? Now, that's the protocol to prayers being answered. Look at what the scripture says. The scripture says that, number one, you have to set your heart to understand. Understand what, pastor? Understand the desire of God as it relates to what he, his, he has you praying for. You got to get an understanding. This is why this, this is not a ritual. This is not brilliant. This is specific. This is laser. There are issues that are on the heart of God, and he's raising you up as an intercessor. He says, this is a specific prayer I want you to. So, number one, I've got to get understanding. The enemy want to make it out of a random prayer meeting to look good. I pray all the time. I pray, I pray because men should always pray. And I'm like, this is not that. This is a prophetic intercessor. This is laser. So he says, look at it. He says, for from the first day that you did it, set thou heart to understand. Number one, in all that getting, get an understanding of what God desires to be prayed. That is so important. Number two, number one, understanding. Number two, here's what on number two, and chasten thyself before the Lord. You see that? Number two is, you got to chasten yourself. You got to come to the Lord, chasten. This is not just for anybody. This is people that are saying, I'm coming before the Lord with a lifestyle. It's worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. He says, understand and then make changes. Understand first that there are a necessity for you to make the change. Now look at what the third one said. And chastened thyself, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. This is so powerful. He says, number one, get an understanding of the heart of God concerning the issue. What does God desire for me to pray? Number one. Number two, get yourself together. Get in the posture. It is time for you to dedicate yourself to this. There are things that are attached to you that you allow to be attached to you. Ask the Lord to clean you up because of what he's given you the opportunity to be. An intercessor. You're going to stand in the gap for people. You are going to see people freed because of your prayer. God is designed to trust you with this, ultimate, this awesome responsibility. But he says you got to understand it. You got to know that this is not just a random prayer meeting. This is not just a ritual of prayer. This is actually me saying to you, I'm going to use your vessel to do the work that I desire. But I need you to come into agreement with me. He says, the moment that these things happen, the understanding came. You, you chastened yourself for this moment. Then he says, now your words were heard when those things happen. Listen to what it, this is the Bible. He says, the moment you set your heart to understand and chastened thyself, then thy words were heard. Now listen what he says and here's what is most powerful to you and you got to understand it he says when that happened he says i am come for your word in other words what's coming out of your mouth when you have aligned yourself with god the angels are in response to it now you will see heaven moving you'll see things happening you'll see manifestation he says, you will see the things that you've been praying for begin to happen in your life. So he said, it is worth it. It is worth it. Get understanding. Chasten yourself for the moment. He says, then there will be the release of the angel. He, he, the angel will be on demand according to your word. I have come for your word. I have come. I am, I am coming for the intercessors that understand. I am coming for the intercessors that have consecrated themselves. I am coming. The Lord says he need this in this season. He need this in this season. He need those that are willing to sacrifice. He need those that are willing to be a prophetic intercessor that will come into agreement with them. The world needs us now more than ever before. We are in a predicament. Hear me, hear me. We are in a predicament. For those of you that have insight in the spirit, you know it's the grace of God. We see things moving. But there's an intent of the enemy that the Lord is giving insight to those of us that know how to pray. And he says, pray against this. Pray against this. Pray against this. Pray against this. Because you, you there, 
if, if my people don't pray, then what the enemy intends to do is going to happen. I need to, I'm going to dig into that. Now, Daniel here is a, is a perfect example of a prophetic intercessor. A prophetic intercessor. Now, I want to read in Daniel chapter 9. I want to go to Daniel chapter 9. This is an interesting story to show you the magnitude of what God is giving us now, of what he's saying he needs to happen, and the posture that we need to be in now. It is worth you consecrating yourself for. When he says, I will come for your word. In other words, all that you've been praying and never seeing manifestation on, you will see it jumping off like crazy. You see things happening, boom, boom, boom. That is an incredible exchange for the Lord to say, you see manifestation. If you can get understanding and if you can chasten yourself, if you can bring yourself under subjection to my way and my will for your life, boom, boom, boom. Prophetic intercessors, get ready. Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to start reading there. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Daniel chapter 9. Here we go. It says, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which were made king over the ram of Chaldeans, of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and by supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confessions and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandment. Daniel is in the middle of a great intercession moment, like many of you now are about to go in. You're about to go in because you feel the burden of this moment. You're going to feel what God is trying to release now. You are feeling it now. Many of you, again, your sleep has been disrupted. Your, 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 your spirit is up on high alert. Why? You can't just dismiss this as another moment. This is the Lord presenting an incredible opportunity. He said, I need you. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Let's go to the next verse. It says, the fifth verse says, we have sinned. Here's Daniel interceding. Daniel is interceding as you are as a prophetic intercessor. He says, I'm praying for myself. But I am one that stands in the gap. I'm praying for my people. I'm praying for leadership. I'm praying for everybody that's responsible for this dilemma. Here it is. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O oh Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of face as at this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. Though all the countries, whether they has driven them, through all the countries, whether thou has driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. You hear Daniel praying. He says, he says, we have left your precepts and your example. We listen to people tell us grace has given us the right not to hear you. We don't hear your prophet. He says, now we are confused about everything. We're calling right, wrong. We're calling wrong, right. We don't know God. He's saying, God, we need you now. Look at this verse. Look at this verse. Verse 7. Oh Lord, to us belong confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong it mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice 
of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel has transgressed. The word Israel here is the people of God have transgressed by the law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured out upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Now, I want to make the dichotomy between the two. Now, I know a lot of times when you're preaching this, when people hear certain phrases, they turn everything. See, you're talking about the law of Moses. See, we're not under the law of Moses any longer. Now, listen, that's considered the old covenant, Exodus 20, when God gave him the Ten, gave him the Ten Commandments. That was considered now the, the old covenant. We're no longer under the old covenant. We're under a new covenant. But there is one common denominator between Old Covenant and New Covenant, and that's God himself. And the same God that was of the Old Covenant still got requirements for his people. So let's not let the enemy cause us to miss this moment. And I will come and unpack all of this after I finish reading. Yeah, we have all transgressed the law, even by the parting, that we might not obey your voice. Let's go to the 12th verse. And he had confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us this great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as has been done unto Jerusalem. Look at what the text said. And as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayers before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand our truth. Therefore had the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our father, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant. I'm interceding on behalf of my people and his supplication, and caused our face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolated. For the Lord's sake, O oh my God, incline thy ear and hear, open thy eyes, and behold our desolation, and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplication before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O oh Lord, hear, O oh Lord, forgive, O oh Lord, hearken and do, defer not. For thy own sake, O oh my God, for thy city and for the people that are called uh, by thy name. Here's Daniel making intercession because he says, my people are in trouble. Praying in Babylon because the people that, that were called by God's name has come into captivity because of the disobedience obedience to the word of God. They disregarded what God said. He says, I am God. I am the one that bring you out. I am the one that do great and incredible things for you, but you won't hear me. You've gone after other gods. What does that mean? What does that mean? You start listening to alternate things that has got your influence. And now you're not hearing me. You are hearing the influences. You are hearing what culture is saying as opposed to my, to my word concerning you. So Daniel says, I got to pray. We know that, that in the eighth chapter, this is why Daniel is praying so diligently because the eighth chapter, eighth chapter he has a vision of something to come. And he's down on his knees praying that, Lord, what I've seen come, I need to intercede for my people. And this is the burden that the Lord is giving now because of the plan of the enemy. Now, in this particular chapter, Daniel is praying out of an old covenant. He's praying to the Lord because of the anger of the Lord against Israel. But in our new covenant, we know now that because of Calvary's cross and because of grace, what we are actually up against is not the Lord's anger against us, it's the plot of, a, of, a, of an enemy that know when I have disconnected from my protection. He knows when I have decided to go 
in a different direction than the assignment of God on my life. And so when people say, well, I, don't, I know God wouldn't do that to me. I always tell them, you are absolutely, positively, 100% correct. It is not God that's doing this to you. It's the enemy and his plan. And this is why the Lord is saying to us that I need intercessors to pray because of the enemy's desire and plot and his, his strategy concerning the earth and, and the people there. If they would pray, I would give them the instruction. If they would pray, I would tell them exactly what to do, when to do. I was doing a study, and I've been doing a study so that I can teach the book of Revelations, the book of Revelation, and the Lord says the gist of the book of Revelation is me giving a revelation to John to give to a people that is, are in tribulation. And John says, if you are here, the, the instructions that I give, then this will allow you to escape all of the things that is planned and plot, plotted for you during the tribulation. This is what the Lord says. He says, I'm sending my word through the intercessors and I need them to pray because of what the enemy is planning and plotting. And so, and so the Lord says he is going to give definitive instruction, definitive instructions for this season. And we need them now. We need them now because again, the, because again, there is something that the enemy has planned and plot for the people of God that are asleep. And the, and the Spirit of the Lord is alerting his, his prophets now to speak, to realign. We are in a realignment season. This is why coming into 2023, we are in a new era. This is why the Lord has been blurting so loud, repent, 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 turn from, turn from, turn from. And if you have noticed, the doctrines have caused us in the last 20 to 25 years have caused us to relax as it related to the word of God and the specific concerning his people. And the enemy has did this. An enemy has crept in while men slept or men refused to be on alert as it related to the spirit of God. And so the enemy has slowly deteriorated the, the belief system or the people of God. How? Because what we have developed a belief in does not support what God desires for us. This is why I say we can't declare kingdom if we're not interested in the king. And now we are giving credit to everything except for Jesus. Now it's the universe that's bringing in our blessing. Now it's all these other things. And the enemy has caused us to be deteriorated. And the Lord says we have to return. I am still the God that requires. I am still the God that declares. So we've heard doctrine. We, we, we're hearing so many things right now by, 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 by philosophers that don't agree with the spirit of God. They don't agree with the spirit. They don't. We, and we are so caught up into them. We're so caught up because they said a new word that was a big word. And God says, I am coming this season with less ambiguity. I am simplifying because my people need to hear and need to understand. Paul, Paul had this very problem in Acts chapter 17 when he came into Mars Hill and he says, I see on your inscription to the unknown God. How, what are you worshiping when you don't know? Who, you have not understanding. You are listening to philosophers. You're listening to these big words. You are trying to advance into something. I, don't, I, I didn't ask for the advancement. When God said advance the kingdom, he didn't ask us to come up with a better kingdom. A better, this is going to be a better with greater ideas. No, what he says, the kingdom is already operating. If you trust me, if you listen to me, I give you a perfect system. To advance me, to take the perfect system that I've already created to other areas. Not to, not to make me better. And this is what we call, in, 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 in our desire to, 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 to be philosophers and to know, well, we, we are in an information age. And we, we always got to learn something new. We got to know something new. And this is why Paul says this in, in the book of, of, of 2 Timothy 3, of verse number 7. He says, here's the issue. It was then and it was now. We are in an information time. We are taught to be smart. Let's get smarter and get smarter. Nothing wrong with getting smarter, but you got to understand that we serve a God that has all wisdom. And as it relates to his kingdom, we got to follow his precepts and examples of we're going to be off with your smart self. Look at what Paul says to them. Paul says, you are ever learning. Paul says to them, you are ever learning. Ever learning. Look at it. Look at it. Ever learning. And never able to come 
to the knowledge of the truth. This is where the enemy got us. Got us. You, you're learning new words, but we are void of the truth concerning what God desires. Concerning what he desires now. And this is what the enemy has introduced. He subliminally, he's very slowly. This is why Jesus says to Peter, Luke chapter 22, I believe, verse number 31, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to sift you. He's, he's not taking it all at one time. He's coming very slowly. And he's not coming the way that you think he's going to come. He's using very familiar words from familiar people that you trusted. Do you know that there is somebody that prophesied something in your life yesterday and today can preach a doctrine of a devil? This is why you have to be on alert when they start shifting what God wants and start introducing their selves and their philosophies. You got to know that, hey, that was a shift right there. I can't follow that. I don't care who you were. This is what Jesus did to Peter when he asked, who do men say that I am? Peter gets a download from heaven and say, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. He says, blessed art thou, Peter, for flesh and blood. That was my father that revealed that to you. But then Peter, after Jesus tell him, now I'm going to the cross. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to present myself. I'm going to die. Peter says, no, you won't die. No, we're not going to let it happen. The same, the same, the same, the same word from the same uh, Christ Turn to Peter and says, now you are preaching to me a doctrine of the devil. Why is this important? Because we think that because somebody spoke something at one juncture in our life, every time they talk to me, they are telling me what the Lord says. And that's not true. This is how the enemy is coming in. This is how, this is how he's coming in. Why is he coming in? Because he knows without a doubt. He knows the people of God. The true believer, I'm talking to you. You got a dilemma, but God is saying he's going to fix it. He's going to, he's going to work it out because of your heart. The, the enemy know the people of God, the true believer with a relationship is so vital to the sustaining of the earth that we dwell in. I want to say that again. The believer is so vital to the earth that we live in right now. We are so vital to this. The enemy knows Satan desires to take away the faith and trust of the believer so that he can reap havoc in this earth. He knows that your belief, your understanding is the key to the sustaining of the earth. This is why he's creeping in. This is why he's creeping in. This is why he's attacking. This is why he's attacking. And, and this is nothing new in postmodernism. The first attack of Satan was on the word of God. Now you hear men that are philosophers and y'all amen them and high five because they said an incredible word and that, that, that is way outside. Whoa, Ooh, wow. And now they are telling you how much error it is in scripture. They're taking away parts of the scripture. And you say, you know what? That's exactly, that, you know, that's exactly what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. And so they, they'll convince you to take out part of a scripture and see what the enemy's desire is is not to take out part of the scripture he's just using that one part right there to get that out because he knows how can you believe that according to your faith be it unto you and that's written in the scripture if you don't if you have stopped believing the other parts see we don't understand how 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 subliminal he is this is why he's coming with people that you admire that have fallen into iniquity and now they are saying things and because they prophesied over your life and you've seen something come to pass and now you're falling for everything that they say this was an intent of the enemy this was satan's intent to do this this is nothing new this is nothing new this is the way that he's convincing the believer to stop believing this is how he's coming in because he knows that you are vital to the earth being sustained when he try to reap havoc we are having all these conversations about what the universe has done or what the universe. And now I'm just, I'm just saying y'all so behind y'all can start. I, God is not behind. He doesn't need my help to shift or to change what he's already predetermined. If my mouth would align with his mouth, if my mouth would align with his mouth, we are going to be challenged. Hear me today. We're going to be challenged in our eschatological view. The Lord is going to do great work in our eschatology. 
because we have we have come to a place that we have not heard what the Lord is saying to us. And so many now are prophesying about the tragedies that are happening in the earth. Let me say this again. I've said it before. I want to say it again. We are talking about if, if your eschatological view, is your, if your eschatology is incorrect, please hear me, what you prophesy is going to be incorrect. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. That's why the scripture says, beloved, believe not every spirit. When your eschatology, when your view of God's heart concerning what he's, he's escalating us to is off, then what you utter out of your mouth is off. I don't care how spiritual people call you. So that's going to have to be a renovation in our eschatology. Because what is creating is this prophetic moment where everybody, listen to me, listen to me, where everybody is talking about what is inevitable. What I'm preaching tonight is not preaching inevitable. It's preaching imminent. Here's what the Lord said, because you've got many prophets that believe that there's some things that are about to happen and ain't nothing can change it. I'm here to tell you tonight that everything is changeable because they don't understand that this is not us fighting against the God of all creation. This is us understanding that there is an enemy that is coming to, 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 to work on our ignorance and cause us to believe something. And so what the enemy is doing through great teachers right now that eschatology is not correct, he's causing us to lose faith. In other words, he's causing the intercessor not to pray because this is going to happen anyway. And so now, no, let's not pray about that one. Let's just let that happen. Let's pray about the next one. But everything, we must understand, there are imminent threats but they're not inevitable because all things change. because we are serving a God that controls everything and his heart concerning me is to bring me into a wealthy place. When I teach that he's is inevitable, that means that the enemy has the power to walk into God's territory and do it anyway. Not if the people of God have turned. This is what the scriptures say. If the people of God have turned, he don't have that power. But when we don't turn, he got the power because the earth has been given to man. And so when we hear the prophecy that this is going to happen, when we hear the prophecy of shortages, when we hear the prophecy of all of these things going to happen, you know what the saints do? They prepare for shortages. When the Lord says, if you prepare in your intercessory, then you can prevent. This is biblical. I know people want to prophesy as Jonah did and get mad at the Lord because I need you to do this because I said it. But we got to understand the difference between what is called inevitable and what is called imminent. We're, we're right now facing imminent threats, but it don't have to be inevitable. The only way imminent threat becomes an inevitable threat is when the people of God, the intercessors, stop praying because they heard some powerful prophet say, this is, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. How do you know? That? You know how I know it? Because I can read it. This is why our eschatological view is going to be challenged because the Lord wants us to see these things because we have not seen it. Let's go to the scripture and prove it then. Let's prove it. Let's prove that things are imminent and not inevitable. Let's prove it. Here we are in the scripture. Let me go to the scripture. Let me go. Now look at this. I'm going to prove that if the people of God, if the intercessors will pray, what the enemy, the Lord sends his prophets to say this is what is planned it's not from me it was in the old covenant when Daniel was talking it was in Job's day but it's not in my day because of Jesus because of Jesus Jesus says now it's the thief John 10 10 the thief that cometh to steal to kill and to destroy don't call your God a thief he's warning us about the thief he says but if you will intercede if my people will intercede I can cause them I can cause this to be reversed let's go to the scripture does Solomon finish the temple he finished the temple the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house he prospered a uh, affected, possibly affected. Now look at this 12th verse. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Y'all need to see this. Now the 13th verse is so important. Look at this 13th verse. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence amongst my people. Do you see what the Lord just said? After finishing in a house of, of, of sacrifice, the place that God designated, here's what the Lord says to Solomon. Now, let's have a conversation. 
He says, because of the obedience, he says, if they say I did this, if they say I sent a famine and there are going to be shortages, if they say that there's going to be pestilence in the land, what is pestilence? Psalms 91 called it noisome pestilence. That's not noisy bugs. That's viral diseases, COVID and all of those other diseases that are in the air, flus and all that. If they, let's look at it again because I need to see it. If I shut up the heavens that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to divide the land, or if I send the pestilence among my people, look at what the antidote is. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and do what? Heal their land. This is what Satan don't want us to understand. This is why he's causing prophets to prophesy that this is inevitable. When God says it's imminent, yeah, you're going to see it. But if you don't intercede, it's going to happen. And because of who you trusted and believe in, they're taking away your intercessor. You have been given the right to pray and the responsibility. Pray for this. Pray for this. Don't have a Jonah spirit. I need this to do this because I said it out of my mouth. I want to prove to people that I'm a true prophet. The Lord says he's given you prophetic to give to the people to tell them what to pray for because what you are seeing coming in the earth is not my desire or design it's the enemy the thief is coming and he desires that he, he find my people in an ignorant place that they don't pray because if they don't pray if they don't seek my face then the world is going to be in trouble and so now he's raising up you a prophetic intercessor He's giving you insight on things to pray for. He's giving you insight on things. This is not about a great gift. See, the intercessor is people that sometimes don't get no notoriety. We are so concerned in fighting over who the greatest did, who can prophesy, how accurate you are. I'm hearing messages about who, what is an apostle and who is a prophet. And don't say you're a prophet because you're an apostle. What has that got to do with what we are going through? It doesn't matter what your title. Can you pray? Can you pray the will of God? I, I believe that the, 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 the Lord is allowing people to go after that red heron. He's giving them an assignment to be arguing over who is the greatest. The prophet, no, 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 see you a bishop and a bishop. That is not the concern now. The concern is that we be in place to pray, to hear God, to understand what God wants. We having good church but we're not hearing God. We're having good moments. We're having good praise and worship services, but we're not hearing God. God says, I desire you to hear me. I desire you. I hold my word over by name. Do you get that? What does that mean? He says, why are you spending all your time calling my name as if I'm, I got an inferiority complex? You, 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 you're saying I'm in worship. Worship is obedient. If you are not obedient to God, you, a slow song is not in, you're not in the worship neighborhood. The first, the first, the first mention of labor under the law of, of, of worship is Abraham, Genesis 22, when he tells, hold Isaac, hold my mule while I and my son go up to worship. In other words, I'm about to go up and sacrifice the thing that I've been waiting my whole life to get. And if I don't do that, I'm not even, I can sling, I can sing every slow song, I can, I can play melodic chords, I can do all that. But if I am not ready to sacrifice, I am not in worship. And the Lord says, I need you to obey me now. I need you to obey me. I need you to create an atmosphere of obedience so that I can be pleased. Because I need to have need of thee to pray. There's some things on the heart of God that he desires people to pray. That's why the enemy is causing all this confusion. He'll give us a good reason not to hear what the Lord is saying. He'll give us a good reason. We have a great church. I believe that the Lord is about to reassign some people. He's about to reassign some people, as he did Philip. Philip in Acts chapter uh, 8 was having a great time with a mighty revival. And the Lord said, I'm sending you to a desert place because there's an Ethiopian, disqualified Ethiopian, that need to hear me, that need to hear me, that need to hear me. There, 
He doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him what your title is. It doesn't matter if you're the chief. It doesn't matter. Can you teach me the word? I need to hear. I need to hear. I need to have understanding. Can you, under, can you, can you rightly divide the word of truth to me? Can you rightly divide? Can you, can, you, can you leave all the cliches because I don't know any of them? I don't know none of the cliches. You can get in the house, but I use this. I can get in the house, doc, with that. But you're down here with me. There's no house to get in. Can you rightly divide the word of truth to me? Can you tell me what the spirit of the Lord is saying? Can you do that? That's what the Lord is asking for now. Because until we are able to properly give them Jesus, simply give them Jesus, all the rest of this stuff don't matter. Hear me, it don't matter. It don't matter. A lot of you, your spirit is so disrupted with it that you don't even want to go around it. I don't need it no more because it's not producing nothing but an arrogant spirit. It's not producing nothing but a, a monk's familiar spirits. And that's the concern. We have gotten so concerned about this uh, hierarchy that we forget that people are hungry. People are, people are hurting. People are dying. We forgot about it because we're so concerned about who is recognizing me and who not recognizing me. And don't you call me. I need you to say this to me. And I need you to give me this title. I need you to say that. Who cares? Who cares? Your spirit is disrupted. And you don't have a desire for it anymore. It's because you have matured. Now you're usable by God. There are many people that are declaring that God is using me. And the only thing they're doing is repeating an old word. They're saying the same thing. And they are only concerned. They don't have a curriculum for anything outside the house. They are depressed if they don't have people there to hurrah them. They are depressed. How do the people that are hurting get value? If you only see value in, in the system and somebody calling your name, I'm jockeying over this. I'm jockeying over this and I, I need y'all to say this to me and I need to listen to me. We're in a different time zone. He's looking for a prophetic intercessors. And the Lord says, if you will yield yourself and say yes now. I want to talk to those of you that think, I don't know if I can do that. See, I don't understand. You don't never give God a chance. You are trying to come out of your intellect. It doesn't work out of your intellect. It works out of your yes to God. You got to say yes to God. You got to say, God, I don't know how, but yes to your will. You got to say yes in spite of you trying to figure out how am I coming from where I came from and who I used to be. How can I do that? That's not your business. Your business is to say yes to the God that gave you life. Say yes, Lord, whatever you want. Stop worrying about who's not going to like it. Don't worry about it. If they ain't going to let me do to that, who cares? You are bringing people to God. Now, first of all, you've got to give your own heart to him. We are in a season of repentance. There are people everywhere need to repent. When I say everywhere, I'm not just talking about geographically. I'm talking about wherever you found yourself in God. I don't care if everybody is calling your name and hurling you as the top. There's a repentance season for all. All of us, we need to look again and see again and see what the Lord is saying. Perhaps he's going to say what you're doing is okay, but don't take it for granted that you're there. Come before the Lord and say, Lord, what is it? What changes do you need to make? Tell me so I can put them into operations now. And I want to pray with some, some of you on tonight. For those of you that will agree to the word on tonight, I'm coming into agreement with you that the Lord would put a spirit of intercession upon you, a spirit to pray, a prophetic intercessory ministry coming upon you. You will avail yourself. You will make time for God. You will make time for him to use you as a vessel that the spirit of the Lord can pray through you. This is when life is going to begin. I want to say this to somebody that's listening to me. You're in transition right now. This is why you are disrupted is because God is calling you from and calling you into the people and the things that you were a part of is no longer a part of your life in God. No longer. It's, it's no longer conducive to where God is calling you. And as long as you continue, you will never have, have your ever have your confidence back. Your identity is gone. 
You can never see yourself as the one that God desires to use when you are so incredible in your own right. And this is a transitional, this is the, listen to me, this is the dog days of transition. In other words, this is why there's so many disruptive things. This is why so many things are shifting on you right now. This is why so many things seem like they're in chaos right now. Is because God don't want you comfortable because he's ready to shift you. Now you got to say yes to the shift. You got to say yes to the, God, the Lord. You got to declare that Lord, the Lord, Lord, if God, if you give me strength, I'll make the move. I want to pray with you today because the Lord said that he would release the spirit of intercession on those that will avail themselves. He will release the spirit of a prophetic intercessor. And you will begin to receive insight from the Lord on things he desire that you be praying for. The things he's going to give you insight on things that, is, that are on his heart. Again, an in, this prophetic intercession is not just people God is giving what to say, uh, giving insight on, but the spirit of the Lord is going to begin to pray through your vessel. As Romans 8, 26 say, when you don't even know what to say, the spirit will make intercessions through you. I'm agreeing with you, Father, right now. I agree. I speak this word upon those that have yielded themselves and said, yes, God, right now, let your spirit endow them right now, God. Let your anointing cover them to pray, God. God, give them right now, God, insight into your heart and what you desire for them to pray. We speak it right now. You said that you would send the spirit of an intercessor, and we command it to be so right now in the name of Jesus. Now, receive that at your house. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. You don't have to fall out. You don't have to kick over no benches. All you have to do is receive it in faith and the Lord will begin to give you. The Lord will begin to visit you. This is the time of visitation. Remember, the keys to having prayers answered, Daniel says it like this, and the book declares this. This is why, number one, I'm going to give it to you once again because this is important. Number one, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou, thou, thou didst set thy heart, number one, set your heart to understand, Number two, chasten thyself before God. Thy words were heard. So now, number one, you got to seek the understanding. A lot of us, a lot of us know too much. We already, I know, don't. Allow God to speak to you about where he is now and what he desires. Get understanding. Pray. This is not a ritual. We're not, not ritualistic praying. I'm going to have a prayer meeting. What are you praying for specifically? God. I'm just praying. Listen, what the Lord is saying, he's, going, he's laser in this season. He's going to be precise to those of you that have yielded yourself as, an, as a prophetic intercessor. Get ready. He's going to give you the heart of the matter. You're going to go right to the heart of the matter. When God has things that he want to usher into the earth, he's going to give you what to start praying for. Start praying for this. Start praying for this. Start, start, start speaking this. So get ready for it. Because it's going to happen. This is, again, not just a regular prayer meeting. Not, not a ritualistic prayer. But this is actually God saying, I'm using you as a prophetic intercessor. You're going to set your heart to understand in number two. You're going to chasten yourself. In other words, I'm getting lifestyle. I'm consecrating myself for this moment. I'm repenting. I'm repenting before the Lord. I'm asking the Lord to clean my heart of all iniquity. Everything that's in me that's not like you. I, I give it up. I give it up. I give it up. I'm so excited about this repentance moment that the body of Christ is about to experience. You know what's about to happen? The glory of God is about to invade his temple. The glory of God. The glory of God is about to invade his temple again. We're going to see sickness healed like we've never seen before. We're going to see people that have been suffering from disease. Watch what I tell you. This season is going to be a season of healing because of the glory of God that is returning to his temple, man. I am, hallelujah, I am so excited about this moment. The glory of God. As Ezekiel said, in, in, in Ezekiel, he says, I, I, I seen heaven. 
again. I was in awe. I fell on my face. We're going to have a fall on your face moment because of the glory of God. Not all this superficial stuff, not all this stuff we have built up that has not created an atmosphere of healing. There are too many people going to the crazy house. There are too many people depressed. There are too many people. It's because of the glory of God being absent. Once the glory, the healing is coming. We're going to see cancer healed. We're going to see heart disease healed. We're going to see brain. We're going to see tumors dissolved. We're going to, we're going, we're going to see this. We're going to see it in our day. This is not many days off. It's just this repentance season is coming. We serve a real God. We serve a real God. We serve a real God. He's real. It's not a fake God. We serve a real God. He's real. And he's ready to do. He's restoring you. He's restoring us. He's restoring. Yes, that there is a need for restoration. I know we got caught up, man. The enemy uh, came in unaware. He planted tares. He planted tares. He planted it. We didn't know. We caused somebody we trusted said things to us, said things to us, and we believed it. I told you earlier that somebody can prophesy to you one day and go in error. You better be aware of this because it'll lead your life into error. And then what it does is open up the door for the enemy to begin to reap havoc in your life. Why is this happening to me? Because the door is open. Now close the door. Close the door with repentance. Seal it again. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Pray again and allow God to speak to you. I'm so excited about your future. I'm so excited about what God is going to do. Restoration is coming. Many of you that thought it was over and done, the Lord said this has not even begun. It has not even begun. It has not even begun. You are a late bloomer. You wished it had to happen 20 years ago. You wished it had to happen 30 years ago. But it didn't. But it's going to happen because God promised you. Get posture yourself. Do the due diligence of what needed. Come before the Lord and say, what do I need to move out? Because I know you're not going to abide with that. I have to make a choice of whether I want you or do I want, to want, want that. I'm not going to be able to hold on to both of them. It's as simple as that. God will help you and he will strengthen you if you say yes. And when you give him a real yes, man, yes, Lord, when you give him a real yes, He's going to do some things in your life. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's happening right now. It's ha I feel the spirit of God right here in this room right now. And, and you're feeling it at your house. God is going to do some things for you. He's rearranging some things for you on your behalf because you availed yourself. He's rearranging. He's rearranging right now. I see the rearrangement happening right now. I see rearranging happening in your life right now. There's some things the enemy thought he, he almost got it in the door before you recognize his plot, before the Lord sent the word. He almost got the door closed. But the spirit of the Lord is now opening the door again. He's pulling you out of what the enemy desired to take you out with. You are free in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Thank God for his word on tonight. Thank God for his word on tonight. I am excited about what the Lord is doing. Uh, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is just your reasonable. It's not a hard thing. It has to become hard because of the doctors. It's not hard. He wants us to come before him again. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to you, Apostle Christopher Mack. Happy 45th birthday to you. Thank all you guys for tuning in on tonight. Thank you, Yolanda Dawson, uh, Tammy Atman Willis, Apostle Kent Deloney, Baba Gaither, Mama Lois, blessings to you. Uh, 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 Glenda F. Uh, uh, Treadwell, blessings to you. Apostle Kent Deloney, blessings to you. Andre Moultrie, blessings to you. Monica Jones, blessings. Regina uh, uh, Summers, blessings to you, Regina. Christine McCoy Morton, blessings to you. Uh, uh, Christine, uh, uh, Mama, bless you. My mama, Ada Whitmore, blessings to her. Uh, Pastor David and Tanya Boyd, blessings. Monica Jones, blessings to you. Uh, Katrina Robinson, blessings to you. Oh, man. Apostle Dennis Cook, blessings to you. 
Adonna Stevens, blessings to you. Sylvia Wilson, blessings to you. Uh, it's Shane Wilson, blessings to you. Uh, 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 Crew Thirds, uh, blessings to you. Uh, man, I like to say blessings to everybody. Priscilla Jones, I bounce back money, blessings to you. Pastor Gail Johnson, blessings to you. Lynette Mosley, blessings to you. Uh, uh, Andre A.J. Simmons, blessings to you. Uh, Pastor Stevie T. Robinson, blessings to you. If I don't see you, uh, I didn't say your name because I didn't see you. Well, blessings, blessings on blessings to each other. Let's lift each other up in prayer. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you that the Lord will move on your behalf. I pray that to the rest of your life, I pray that God will do a quick thing in your life and you will have the testimony of manifestation up in your life and that's what God desires. You are a prophetic intercessor. He's going to use you in this season. He's going to use you in this season like never before. The glory of God is returning to his house. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. That's going to be a breakout of the spirit of the Lord. And God says, I'm going to do this with myself. I'm just going to the people that are veiled. The, the house of the Lord, the one that it, the enemy tried to discredit, is going to see the glory of the Lord again. And, and healing is going to break out. I'm telling you, it's going to, it's going to break out. It's going to break out. There's going to be wealth transfer. Hear me. There's going to be wealth transfer. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, tomorrow night. I am speaking for a spirit of worship, spirit of glory, worship center tomorrow night. It'll be online. It'll be online. Um, Apostle John Harris, Atlanta, Georgia, Decatur, Georgia, actually. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll, I'll be posting it on my site. Amen. Amen. Hey, tune in. Tune in. That's a word from the Lord. Uh, that the Lord is saying, man, y'all pray for me. Please pray for me. Pray that the, I will do everything that the Lord is, is, has uh, required of me. I need your prayer. Your man of God need your prayer. Men, men of God have a, women of God as well, have an incredible grace upon them. We know how to make life look so easy to, to everybody. But sometimes they tend to think that men and women of God are not in, 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 in the struggle as well. And we have a grace to make it look good. But pray for me. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your man and woman of God that, that great God would grace them in this very unusual season of, and time. Especially those that are commissioned and their hearts are to do the will of God. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. They are a rare breed. Uh, amen. I start with a prophetic word. So I will end with one. Let me put the cash app in this thing. I always give people an opportunity uh, uh, to sow if they so desire. Amen. Uh, thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord for all that he's doing. Keep praying because it's going to happen. Again, I start with a prophetic word. I'm going to end with one blessings on 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 blessings